Hey fellas, Jazz here. So, today's progress, uh, today is Saturday the 22nd of January 2022 at about 7.30. Um, I'm already starting to get tired, um, which is good because I need to fix my sleep schedule. But today, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a new feature they managed to code yet again in a day, which I'm very, very proud of and I want to show off. Um, as you can see, um, I've got some temporary variables in here, and I'll explain what all of these stacked menus do. But before I do that, maximize on play. And I've got a bunch of just uh, sample stuff in here, so it's going to be random garbage. And if I just pause that, and I turn off the main menu, and I play again, we get a test version of a radial menu. Right now I'm using my right stick to select these, which is really good. And basically the idea is, is that this is an image with like a radial fill, and it's like seven different images, right? And the script is spawning these and making sure that they're the right size and rotation, all on its own, all just through code. And with these, when you select it, it gets a little bit bigger, and it also has a few events, so you can tell when it's being selected. Correct in with the uh, trigger, uh, or alternately selected with the stick pressed in, and it can also detect when you're doing one, two, sorry, sorry, zero, actually, one, two, three. And this is like both me holding down the trigger and pressing in the stick. And this means you get a very large breadth of selection. Like, you get like four options. So you can have an event trigger on select. Usually, you just have like a list of four and you want to be using the first one. But if you want to have one on select, one on press, one on alt, and then one on just like press and alt, then yeah. Alt is just holding in the stick, by the way. It's used for, well, alternate options. And as you can see, I've got some random data here. This was based off of some concept art, and my like audio levels were sort of shot, so yeah. Which is why I'm gonna turn it down again. Holy crap. I can't seem to get OBS correct like at any time. But yeah, um currently there's no events. Oh wait, yeah, there are events on this. If I bring up this console. There we go. It can tell when it's been pressed. And if I just go over here this. No? The important event on. Okay, well let's fix that. Let's say for perms, I want to make it say that it has been altered, right? So, drag this over here, go into radial test, and we have our list of options here. So, uh, the data types are basically you have pages, um, other scripts can paginate like uh, the radial menu, so you know, usually this would be changed by, for example, the scrolling selector, um, like what got proved from yesterday, but it's been in for a while. Every page has a name, and then options. So as you can see, this is seven options, so you have seven different things, and you get a name, which is filled out here, an icon, which is filled out here. If it's null, then it's turned invisible, um, which allows you to have text-only entries. You get a start angle, so perm starts at 30 degrees and um, goes for 60 degrees, so it goes from 30 plus 60 equals 90. And you can use this to tell how many degrees it needs to extend. So as you can see, this is 60 degrees, but this is 45 and 45. And you get such a very wide breadth of customization. Anyways, um, as you can see, you've also got your events. Select, press, alternate, and alt plus select, which is good. Um, zero. Apparently this was supposed to be working, but I guess it's not. Um, I did do a refactor of this uh, just then, so if there's a few bugs, that's okay. They'll be sorted out. And for example, let's place, I guess, this sample, like, thumbstick button that's still in stock assets for some reason. I guess I'm lazy. Let's use this, like, tower, and, like, for me, you know, I can, I can change it. So if I want to make this tower, I can make this move, um, pause. I guess I could use, like, the mobile button. Yeah, uh -huh. and then for metadata, I could use like this little accelerator button. 
And as you can see, anything with zero events basically gets ignored. You can select it, but it doesn't do anything. So I should make it log an error, realistically. Um, I'll test. Uh, yep. And so you can see how this would change. Uh, for example, if I want to make, for example, the elf hat not 45 degrees, but 40 degrees. No, let's make it 30. Um, so that's back 15. So the start angle is going to be uh, 110 for this, and it'll be 60, right? So these are all of you can. This is really, really customizable, which is great because I have so many different ideas for radial menus. This is going to be used like everywhere, so it's going to be great. As you can see, if I remember, this is on the title screen for testing. Um, usually, it will like disable menus and do stuff with that, but that's usually done via other scripts, which is, you know, it's it's part of the course. Full main menu, let's disable that. As you can see, it's already going away. As you can see, I have stuffed this up. <laughs> I have already stuffed this up. So yeah, this is what happens when you customize it wrong. And it's, it's actually still um, working very well. So yeah, this is what happens when you accidentally break a menu like this. As you can see, I can still resize it. Um, one of the hard things to do was getting like this, because this is 0 degrees, this is 30 degrees, and this is like 330 degrees. So getting it to calculate over this little um, seam point, essentially, here. Really hard it was. It was super annoying to get that working, but I'm so glad I got it, um, like, actually going good. Uh, what else? All right, let's fix that up, I guess. Um, this is this is me just doing a random fix job, so... That's 120. Sorry, 120, and then 180 is, like, below. It's not, it's not um, 110, because then that overlap is there. So even when it breaks, it still works for the most part. And as you can see, there we go. Um, of course, I have to, as I said, I have to whack this on the main menu, because nothing really uses this at this point. Uh, there's going to be typing prompts that use this. So for example, okay, um, let's say... I'm going to do this live. Um, let's say zero options. So let's say we want to stick... How many options do I want to stick? Oh, 36. Okay, I'll be right back. I will be, like, right back. Well, this is stupid. Look at this. I have put 36 different things in here. This is the first time I'm really stress testing this. So let's put this one up here. This is our old one, and this is, usually you'll be able to switch between these, but yet again, I haven't hooked that up to anything yet. Again, uh, dictated by other scripts, but... <laughs> these are all going to individually be 10 degrees, and take up 136 evenly. And eventually I might make um, scripts to auto-generate these, but now for the moment you've all been waiting for... Let's do a live stress test. I'm actually excited about this. Oh! Oh, that's clean! I was not... Hang on, hang on. Let me get a better look at this. Hang on. Oh, shift P. That is clean! a little bit finicky. I would have expected a lot worse. Hold on. Okay, it's a little bit finicky, but realistically I'd put caps, lowercase, and numbers all on separate pages, and then like characters from other languages. And I make it dual analog, so I go A through the J on the left stick, and then K through to like Z. Wait, no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. J is 10, 11, 12. Okay, so A through M on left stick, and then N through Z on the second stick. And then I put numbers and symbols on one, and then I would put 
lowercase, and then other languages on this. But let me tell you, 10 degrees? This is still really comfortable. I was not expecting it to be like this sleek. Like, wow. So yeah, um, that's how powerful this radial menu can get, apparently. Um, this center text I'm not really using right now. I might just make it like an extra this way for this. But oh my god, this is so good. Like I can instantly flip from H to 2. Just like that. And it's not too finicky. It's actually really, really nice. Oh, yeah, I was expecting that to go much worse, but yeah, apparently the radial menu is that powerful that you can actually do that. Anyways, um, thank you all for watching. This was really fun. I wasn't expecting that stress test to go as well as it did. That was super clean, yet again. Um, where, where would I be using this? Obviously typing prompts, as I showed, but um, I'd be doing it like a lot differently, like with pages and stuff, as I said before. Um, what else? Uh, multiplayer stuff, you know, like vote kicks, player selection, um, you know, controller chat, like with auto fills and stuff, maybe filtering. Uh, when you hit select, you can like choose to like open chat, open voice chat, um, bring up like the scoreboard and like other options. And if I ever make, um, like a map loader, I'd probably be using that a lot, like in place of like that top ribbon that like, like see right here. So instead of this, this would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you press it, and it would like um, change to a different radial menu, or like page to something else. Either way, um, I'm really, I'm, I'm stupidly freaking happy about this. Um, how it turned out, it was so clean. Uh, yet again, thank you all for watching, and take care.